Hello there. My name is Dr. Hazel Grace Yates, and I am joined with Mark Boughton. And we are sharing this interview conversation today with you because we are ramping up for our topical circling immersion happening in Austin. And Mark, I want to pass the torch over to you. And we've done uh, circling immersions in the past, and we really loved working together. And so we wanted to do another one. And you were the one who it was like, let's do the topical circling. And I just want to, I want to hear what is your passion and motivation and desire to offer this topical circling immersion. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, I really love topical circling. I think there's something about like bringing this form of the practice that um, for me has been really rich and insightful and mm -hmm. getting to like pick a specific theme or topic or area of my life that I'd like to get circled around and having some like uh, curious, non-directive coaching oriented just like a, a curious open exploration of my relationship to whatever topic has been profoundly insightful. Um, I, I think there's like a way of, yeah, being in that relational space. It's can be so gentle, like, Hey, I want to get to know about your experience of money, like what it's like for you. And it's not coming from like a, a yeah, kind of like a coaching or a therapeutic mindset where the other people might actually have some like direction they want to take the experience or some like advice they might want to give me. But like, I actually have the the spaciousness to feel into how I do feel about that topic mm. and kind of a birthday circling context has been just really rich and insightful for me in the past. Yeah. And I want to, I noticed that I want to slow down and break some um, kind of tease apart what you just said, especially for people who maybe aren't familiar with circling or are new to mm. circling that the context is, is never that we're here to coach, fix, advise, or philosophize the person, but it's really a practice of being with one another and how is it for us to be ourselves in connection with the other person as we put our attention on them around the topic that they want to explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, um, go ahead. And generally, in in the the style of topical circling that we're going to be doing during this mm -hmm. weekend, uh, we'll have the whole group's attention on one person, uh, in service of supporting that person in coming to their own decisions, insights, um, exploring their own relationship to that topic. And mm -hmm. I think it'd be really powerful to have to both be witnessed by a group, but to, ha to have them like actively, you know, asking questions and sharing their own experience of what it's like to be with you. Mm -hmm. And, and, and mm -hmm. something I've noticed is that being in the, the circle E role, it's what we call the person that's getting circled or mm -hmm. in the, the role of the rest of the group, um, it can be really profound and insightful in either seat. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, there's something like seeing someone have insights about their, you know, relationship to vulnerability. That's the topic they've chosen. They have insights about it. And as I see them discover something new, I can't help but discover something new about myself, even mm -hmm. if it's different to whatever it is they're seeing and uh, having space after to debrief a circle and like, you know, for the group to more organically share what we're learning. It's just to be really, um, really intimate experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love how you put attention on that. And that's one of the things that I personally love to experience in circling is that whether I'm facilitating or whether I'm a participant or whether I'm being circled, there's opportunities all the time for me to learn something newly or release or let go of something that's not serving me or um, laugh yeah. at my humanity and really have ultimately, I mean, for me, ultimately, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this practice is it is a spiritual practice for me. And when I say spiritual, what I mean is it's, it's investigating how am I being a human being? And is there something that's in the way of me being even more light and even more free and even more my authentic self or even more loving? Um, and so, but it's done so circling in my experience, this, this style of circling is done so in, a, in such a spacious, gentle way that there's, um, that there's room for me to, there's actually like room for me to like actually look and investigate as opposed to like, I, I have pressure that I need to look at it or I need to fix it or I need to do something. And it actually gives me the sovereignty and the authority and the freedom to, to say, actually, I'm looking at this thing from your lens and my lens and all these lenses and I'm actually going to keep it because I like it and it works for me. Mm. 
or um, I have the, the freedom and the spaciousness to look at something or from the lens from other people's and say, actually, now that you've been able to point that thing out from that lens, from that lay, I, I'm seeing that it's actually not serving me and I can consciously, actively say, I release that or I let that go or I change my reality or change my perspective. Mm. So I'm just launching into <laughs> some of the reasons <laughs> that I like circling. Um, but in particular, I think that the thing that's exciting about this is, I don't know if you've experienced this too, Mark, but sometimes when someone's being circled, they're this being mm -hmm. this really, is that they might get into this like this passive role or they might get into this way that they don't, aren't connected to and realizing that they actually have a say of how the circle goes. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this feels like giving them an opportunity to have more direction and have more clarity on what it is that they're wanting to get out of the, the circle. Um, and again, to the, the um, context that we always set is that we're not, we're not actually achieving, we're not attempting to get anywhere, but it's an exploration of a particular topic. Yeah. I really uh, appreciate that distinction. It's not like, Oh, I'm, I'm, going to like enter into the circle and I know what I'm going to see and I've had, I have it planned out. It's more like, huh, I feel curious about my relationship to whatever topic and I want to like have the space to explore it and mm -hmm. uh, be with other people in that experience. Totally. Um, it's, it's so interesting. You know, I'm thinking about like I could journal on my relationship to any, any topic, any theme mm -hmm. and probably like see new things and have insights about myself, mm -hmm. but there's something uh, for me, that can be quite vulnerable and quite healing about actually discovering new things about myself well with other people. Mm. And then like seeing them see me in moments of insight can be like such a, a tender and like vulnerable, uncomfortable, heartwarming experience. Um, yes. <laughs> All of the words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think the thing that I just want to name here, and I almost feel a little bit teary, because mm. revealing or seeing an insight of yourself, mm. being witnessed by other people, the thing that I love about circling is that as scary as that is, my experience in integral, mainly integral style circling, um, is that it's, the, it's, it's love. Yeah. It's kindness, it's gentleness, it's acceptance, it's welcomingness that we can actually be so tender and raw and vulnerable and nervous um, and, mm. we, and we can also be held uh, in those states. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like a softening in me being with mm. you in that. Yeah. I feel a lot of resonance. Yeah, and so I want to just take a minute to, for us to kind of to talk about what is our experience with circling, why are we doing this, like what's our background, and why are we so bold to say let's lead this thing together in Austin? Yeah, um, for me, I circling discovered me around six years ago. Uh, I was in Toronto, Canada, where I was living at the time, and I got circled by this group of guys, and the moment I like sat down and like looked around and they, I looked at them, they all had their attention on me and uh, I started crying within like five minutes mm. <laughs> with the circle. It was like, it's mm -hmm. just such a powerful experience of like, mm -hmm. wait, you guys care and you genuinely want to know me and you're curious about my present experience. And it just totally blew my mind. Mm. And I then became kind of obsessed with circling. Um, yeah, for a while afterwards, I became really obsessed with the practice and taught myself over the years mm. and eventually started leading circling weekends and a circling training here in Boston where I'm currently visiting. And yeah, I just like fell in love with the practice. And, uh, you know, something for me is that my sense, I've been discovering this more recently, that my sense of spirituality and my practice of circling are completely intertwined at this point. Mm. Um, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's kind of amazing to recognize that like the values that I hold in the practice are also the values that I hold in my like interactions with the world and other mm -hmm. human beings and myself. Mm -hmm. and it's cool to like see how, I don't know, it, uh, as I've been 
practicing circling, it's really informed who I'm evolving into in some, some really beautiful ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love hearing, the, I love the, I love the integration of it all. And mm. it's like who I am in circling is who I am all the time. <laughs> it's not just a matter of, oh, we're going to do the thing and we're going to go into the circle and now we're circling. But it's, mm-hmm. it's actually the, the beautiful part of this practice is actually the transition and the integration, like you're saying, of this is how you're being in all of your world. That's what I'm hearing you say. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, truth? definitely. Mm-hmm. And so your training um, with circling, a lot of it's been self-study and just doing it a lot, um, but mm-hmm. you have some formal training, yeah? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, studying with Guy at uh, the Art of Circling, which is mm-hmm. their program in California, which is mm-hmm. really amazing. So I'm currently a student of that. Um, and I'm just finishing up co-leading uh, circling training with Sarah Ness and Jess Nickel, mm-hmm. who's one of the lead trainers at the Integral Center. Mm-hmm. And, Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you know, I'm really struck struck by a word that you said a few minutes ago. Uh, you talked about spaciousness, mm. and that really stuck with me. Um, something that I've like uh, that I'm thinking about as I reflect on that is that like the the pace at which uh, introspection, while in connection, occurs, is often significantly slower than the pace of normal human interaction. Normally in the world, there's like, I'm talking, you're talking, you say something about yourself. I'm like, oh, cool. And I relate it to myself or I share something mm-hmm. else. And for me to have the space to share something and then like you ask a question and then for me to like feel into what is most deeply true instead of just giving you the first answer that pops into my mind. Um, that's something that I really value about this, this style of circling is like the spaciousness to allow me to introspect and feel deeply into myself while I'm in relationship with you. And I think it's a, a lot more conducive to intimacy and insight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, I enjoy that. <laughs> Especially for someone like myself who moves so quickly. Mm. When I'm moving so quickly, how much am I missing? So the, the opportunity to be mm. able to have the space to slow down in a supported, encouraged way is, is also really um, something I appreciate as well. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I, I found circling, I reluctantly went, I was at the integral center at Alethea many, many years ago. And I reluctantly went with the, this kind of attitude of, Oh, we might be losing connection. Are you able to hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Right. Um, I went into it thinking, oh, I've done so much training. I'm not really going to get much out of it. (laughs) And I just was totally slammed and blown away by the things that I had never seen about myself. And the thing that I got out of it was um, a completely different relationship with my whole family. And um, I I stopped needing them to see me and understand me. And I let go of, of being angry that, that they can't see me or understand me. And what I did is I shifted my attention on getting to know what it's like to be my family. And what I, what I discovered is they're really cool. <laughs> they're, ama- they're amazing. And then when I shifted my energy mm-hmm. of what is it like to be my dad? What is it like, what is it like for, my dad or, or for my brother to be him? All of a sudden, over the last couple of years, when I shifted my attention there, is they started getting to know what it's like to be me. And then I was, then I was understood and seen. And by that time, it was kind of funny because I was like, I didn't totally need that anymore because I had released letting go of that. But it, it was like the icing on the cake of um, when I was able to shift my attention. Um, I ultimately really felt more connected mm. with them, which is really what I was wanting anyway. So, um, so that's how I got into circling mm. and, and then I dove in, yeah. got trained at the integral center with amazing, amazing human beings there. And I get to lead and teach circling around the country and it's such an honor and privilege. And it's by far one of my favorite, um, favorite practices. And, and personally for me, I'm a, I'm a 
I have a doctorate of sexology, and so I work with people um, with the lens of, of helping transformation around sex. But I so, in my sessions with people and groups and with individuals, I use the, the, the practices and elements of circling in my everyday work life. Mm, yeah, me too. I have a, currently have a coaching practice, and I'm studying a form of somatic psychotherapy. And circling is like, so much of what I do in coaching is just circle people and like get their world. <laughs> um, and maybe there's more like guide and directive kind of coaching, but generally mm -hmm. like towards the end of a session and it's amazing how powerful a tool it can be. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Cool. Great. Well, Mark, I'm super excited about it. And anything else you want to say here at the end? Um, no, I just feel really excited. I get to spread this practice in the world more fully and to spread this like, um, unique expression of the practice through having a whole weekend dedicated to topical circling. I feel mm -hmm. really excited about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel really excited about that as well. And I feel really excited about working with you because it's so, it's so fun and pleasurable and light and easy and flow. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah. Enjoy. Yeah, it. me too. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> cool. All right. The end. <laughs>